All right, good morning, everyone. We would like to welcome world number one, John Rom, to the Media Center here at the Players' Championship. John, making your fifth appearance here, what's it like to be back and thoughts on going into the week? Uh, always happy to be back. Um, happy that, you know, getting over certain worldwide situations, we're back in this room and things are starting to go a little bit back to normal. So, um, you know, really happy in that sense. Uh, with what we went through a couple of years ago, precisely this week. Um, when it comes to the course in the tournament, uh, it's, I think it's a week that a lot of us look forward to. Uh, it's a course that I've played well in the past. It's a challenging golf course, and it's one that I enjoy. You know, I, for the most part, enjoy Pete Dye the signs. I enjoy the challenge that he, he gives us as players, and, you know, it's a golf course worthy of this tournament and a champion that you know should be really proud when they're hosting that trophy on Sunday because you truly are the best player in the world when you win this week. With that, we'll open up questions to the media. If you have a question, please raise your hand and we will get a microphone over to you. We will go ahead and open it up here in the back and get a microphone over. Hi, John. As world number one, you uh, this weekend four other golfers can overtake you as the number one. You're playing with one of them on Thursday and Friday. Uh, do you feel like you're chased this weekend? I had no idea until right now. So. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, you should ask if I want to know those things or not. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, I mean, even if you're number one, you still got to perform every week. So. Uh, and I'm chasing people myself as well, so no, I don't feel like I'm being chased. And we'll bring the microphone up here in the front to Ryan Lavner. Uh, John Roy said that he kind of treated yesterday as a mental health day after the brutality of Bay Hill weekend. I'm curious if you felt the same and kind of how you decompressed yesterday. No, uh, not really. Uh, you know, I might be somebody who gets a little intense on the golf course, but within one hour of that last putt going in, I've completely forgotten. Uh, you know, the golf course set up, it is what it is. You have to deal with it, but when it's over, it's over. I won't. I'm okay. And typically, I say within an hour. Uh, right now, it's pretty much until I get the whole kepa, which however long that is. It could be 30 seconds if they're there. It could be 30 minutes. Uh, I didn't really, you know, spend any any extra energy on more than I needed to on the golf course. I mean, yesterday for us was a travel day. It was first time for me in a car ride two and a half hours with the baby. So I was more worried about that than 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 the course. And now over to Daniel Rapport. Your results in this event have, have improved throughout the years. Uh, I'm curious about this golf course specifically. If you could have one part of your game that's really clicking and firing on all, on all cylinders, what's the most important part this week? Oh, it's, this is one of the hardest weeks to decide on just one because every part of your game needs to be good. Uh, it's demanding of the tee. It's demanding on the approach shots. If you miss the green, you better be in the right spot. It's, it's demanding all throughout. That's what makes it such a great golf course, right? Um, but if I had to pick one, I would probably say short game, mainly because I'm a pretty good ball striker. So even if I'm not at my best, I, I still know I'm in a good level. So. If I'm getting those up and downs, that means you're going to be making, you know, quite a few birdies in par fives, and there's a lot of holes where if you just put it in the fairway, you're going to have a short iron in, right? So birdies are going to be coming in. So if you can eliminate a lot of those mistakes that can happen here very easily, you can see yourself contending on Sunday. And then knowing that last week was your first time playing at Bay Hill, just with how difficult that course played and how much of a mental grind last week was, will that impact your decisions on whether to play that event going forward? I liked it. I enjoy the golf course, I enjoy the design, and I enjoy the challenge. Um, I've heard different reviews through uh, a lot of players. Um, my main thing was I, I didn't expect, and I was warned about this, I didn't expect the golf course to change as much as it did from Wednesday to Thursday. 
because Wednesday, Prime Day, was playing soft. Those greens weren't firm, they weren't that fast, and then I show up Thursday to the second green and it's brown. I just, I missed it 25 feet right off the pin and I could not stop that ball within 10 feet of the hole. So I just, I was surprised. It is something I didn't know and I think knowledge about the course and the setup would have helped me a little bit, but it is what it is. Uh, you know, going forward, I'll, I'll be back. Yeah, I liked it. You know, as a family, we liked it. There's a lot of things to do for, for my wife and, and baby out there. And if I'm enjoying the golf course, it seems like it's a week that I'll probably go back to. And we'll go over here to Doug Ferguson. Is it more frustrating to play uh, on what seems like a putting contest or on greens that barely have any grass on them? I'd rather play Bay Hill every single week of the year than a golf course that challenges you in no other way but putting. We're trying to be the best players in the world. You're playing at Arnold Palmer's place. It's Arnold Palmer's legacy. I think he would like us to suffer a little bit. And I have nothing to complain about that, honestly. The only thing I would say, they don't need, if they're going to have the greens that firm, maybe have them that firm by Tuesday so we can get <laughs> ready. And we know, right? But again, it seemed like the only one on that field that wasn't prepared for that was me. Right? Everybody knew what to expect. So, uh, yeah, if it was up to me, I, we would see more of that every single week rather than a setup with no rough and, you know, having to shoot 25 under. And we're just going to go right behind Doug. Hey, John. Um, Tiger going into the Hall of Fame tomorrow. Can you speak a little bit to um, what he meant to you uh, as an influence, uh, even though you're obviously quite a bit younger? And can you imagine yourself one day, do you, do you think about that going into the Hall of Fame? I feel like there's a few things to accomplish before you have a Hall of Fame worthy career. Uh, I feel like I've done two of them, which has been number one in the world and winning a major. But I don't know what else actually have no idea what the criteria is to be in the Hall of Fame. I have no idea. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it would be an honor to be inducted into it. Right? I feel like, if I'm not mistaken, I have no idea. I think only two Spanish players have been inducted in it. Uh, I'm assuming Sergio might be as well. So I could be the fourth, which, you know, it would be a true honor. Um, and what can I say <laughs> about Tiger that we haven't said already? Uh, he inspired a whole generation. Uh, besides entertaining all of us for 20 years and doing unbelievable things. He inspired the generation of players that you see him today. I mean, you have at the top of the world, a lot of 20 some year olds and early 30 year olds that grew up watching him and trying to copy him. And I think that's why the level of the game is as high as it is right now. So, um, you know, aside from everything he, everything that he did, I think it's a testament to what he was able to accomplish and how many people he was able to inspire. And we'll go all the way in the very back with Kathy. I know what I like about Pete Dye golf courses. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I like them because they're visually interesting. But what do you like about them when you're playing it? So I think they are fair. And when I say that is when you hit a good shot, you get rewarded. If you see a lot of his designs, let's, say, let's take the 18th hole, for example. Even though you have a hard cut, edge of water on the left side is not too tilted towards the left, right? Or let's say the 16th green on the right side, it's actually sloped towards the center of the green. So if you hit a good shot that's going on that line, most likely it's going to stay on the green, right? You're not going to get a ball that lands in the center of the green and just rolls off into nothing. That's, that's what I like about it. Um, it's, he does a great job at making deceptive tee shots that are intimidating, but then play wider than you think, right? And there's a lot of movement to the golf course, right? Uh, if you have a shot that requires a left to right shape of the tee, the next shot is going to be most likely a draw. And if it's a draw of the tee, then you most likely will need a fade. So uh, you need to be in extreme command of your golf ball. That's what I like about it. He makes what I would call functional golf courses uh, that are really aesthetically pleasing, right? A lot of times there's architects that can make a golf course that looks beautiful but just doesn't play as good as it looks. And I think Pete Dye can, you know, up there with Alistair McKenzie, some of the great ones can accomplish both. We're going to stay in the back just to the left of Kathy. Yeah. So, so, John, you were saying how much you're able now to, once you finish around, and probably because of Kepa, and because of another baby soon again, mm -hmm. you're able to forget about it and be present 
and kind of not bring any trauma or whatever from the round. So does it help you now, like, approach any new tournament, like the players this week, like a completely new tournament and meet in the moment and not have anything from the past that bothers you? Yeah, I mean, like I said, even before being a dad, it's something like, it's something that as soon as I was done playing, pretty quickly I would get over it, but now it's even quicker, right? I'm even better at not bringing that at home. Because to feel, you know, what I learned, kids are so in tune to what you're feeling that if I come home all frustrated, for no reason he will get frustrated, then mom gets frustrated, and that's not a good afternoon, right? So uh, I've become even better. Plus, when I see him, he just now that he's, he's been walking for a while, he looks at me and runs up to me. I can't help but to smile. And at the second I smile, I forget about it. And even though, you know, I'm not really too worried about it. Uh, like, like last week, I wasn't too worried about the setup. If anything, I'll be worried about what I could have done better. But the setup, it is what it is. We all have to play it, and a lot of people did great. We're going to go over here to the left side here in the back. Sí, hola, John. Como papá, como europeo, ¿qué pasa por tu mente cuando ves lo que está pasando en Ucrania? Uh, okay, so you do this in English or Spanish? Well, well, you can do it in as a, a Sorry, girl. yeah, I just, I don't... Sure, as a, as a dad, as a European, what goes through your mind when you're watching what's going on in Ukraine? It's hard. It's hard to see, honestly. Um, I think I saw some news that uh, they might be targeting or not, but they're having bombing schools in Ukraine, which to me is absolutely ludicrous. Uh, uh, I don't know what goes through a human being's mind to be doing that at this day and age, really. Right? I, I don't know. I, I can't rationalize it in my head, but unfortunately it's happening, and hopefully they can find a solution soon. But it's, it's sad, honestly. It's really sad. Uh, those people in Ukraine right now need help because through no fault of their own, they're going through what they're going through. So, uh, you know, luckily I know the PGA Tour and some of the golf industries are working on something to support that, which, uh, you know, I think a lot of us might jump on, but hoping uh, they can find uh, at least uh, a way to, to maneuver it because there's a lot of innocent people that, that shouldn't be going through this. I mean, nobody should, but... You know, um, I really am at a loss of words every time I think about it because I can't believe it, honestly. I just have a hard time believing what goes through Putin's mind to be doing this. And we'll go stick in the back with Michael then up to the front. You talked about how last week the course changed so much from Wednesday to Thursday, mm -hmm. getting firmer. With the forecast that it looks like this week, it's going to go from probably firmer to softer. For you, which is an easier adjustment? A golf course that's getting firmer throughout the week or a golf course that's getting softer throughout the week? Well, an extreme change all of a sudden, it's hard either way, right? So I don't know. I wouldn't know because we don't experience the change to firm that quickly that often. At least I have. Now, usually there's a process and you can see it going on and you can see it maybe on, on the weekend getting firmer. Um, but I feel like a lot of us have had a lot more experience on, you know, on a thunderstorm coming in and softening up the golf course, right? So I feel like that may, it'll make it easier for all of us, but uh, an extreme change like that is hard either way. But if I had to guess, I think going into softer conditions should be an easier change. And we're getting a mic over here up in the front. There have been uh, a number of players uh, from Spain, <coughs> who had broad shoulders that you're now standing on, Seve Ballesteros, mm -hmm. and of course Sergio, and Jose Maria Latabo, and a number of others. How do you feel about your role as a uh, Spanish player, and what can you say about the number of top world-class players that have come out of Spain? Uh, and even including women like, you know, mm -hmm. Carla Giganda and, and, and others, of course. Yeah. Uh, it's an honor to be in this in this situation. Um, obviously, it only happens when you're playing good golf, right? So I'm not actively thinking about it all the time. Uh, I'm just worried about doing the best I can on the golf course, right? And hopefully that way, like many players have done before, inspire some players coming up. Um, 
And I don't know why. I think Sevi obviously did a lot of it, right? There's a lot of talented players in Spain. And there's a lot of talented players in Spain you never see. And I don't know why. A lot of times they can't make the jump into a professional ranks, but you know, for for a country that only has about 300,000 golfers, this sure has been a lot of success. So I don't know what it is, uh, but you know, uh, it, it's there. I just don't know what it is, because especially most of the kids that grew up in Spain, even myself at one point, all we want to do is play play football, be soccer players, right? So. Uh, I honestly can't give you an answer. I would, if I had to say, a lot of it, it was because of Sevi. I think Sevi opened the gates for so many of us and transformed the way people look at golf. Jack and yeah, exactly. It used to be such a leader, leader sport in, in Spain, like everywhere else in the world. But, um, you know, just in the 70s, 80s, he changed it for all of us, right? So all of those people that started playing golf, the next generation, such as myself and Sergio and others, started doing it as well, right? So I don't know. Why exactly? Um, but you know, we seem to have a bit of a talent for this sport. I'm going to go back over to Doug Ferguson. John, when you were younger, can you give me a list and order of of which golf tournaments you couldn't wait to watch, and where did the players fit on that? If it was well, shown? my curfew was 9:30, so uh, I didn't get to watch much of it. <laughs> <laughs> that was my thing. Like I, I, I can't tell you how many, and my parents were strict with it. The only time I could miss it was to watch the first half of a soccer game that started at 9 p.m., so my, I could get to almost to 10 to watch our soccer team. That was the only time I could miss it. I remember when Tiger made that chip in in 05, I begged my parents to stay up. Nope, you're going to school tomorrow. You can't stay up. And... Uh, <laughs> I really didn't want, watch that much. I was in the U.S. I watched the Open Championship a lot. And on the weekends, I would watch more, a little bit more of Saturday, but not that much, honestly. It's, it's tough to even remember just because of that. I mean, <laughs> I had to be to sleep so early, I didn't have the time to do it. I mean, there was a nine-hour difference, six-hour difference with Florida, so it was 3 p.m. here. They're barely getting started. But the place has always been a great event, right? Obviously, I watched the majors, a lot of the European events. Uh, and the WGCs, all the big events are big worldwide, right? So obviously this one was, was very high up there, even though I never got to watch it finish life. you still go to bed at 9.30? Yes, pretty much. <laughs> it kind of went to, you know, in college, I don't think there was one night in college in my last year of high school I went to bed before midnight. And then as I say transition to term pro, I just got a little bit earlier, a little bit earlier, a little bit earlier. And... As a father now, when, when Kepa goes to bed at 7, I'm ready to go to bed as well. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty much 9.30 even, even so now. And over here in the middle with Adam Schubert. Following off what Doug just asked you, was it, was it a big deal, though, when, when uh, Sergio won, won this tournament to you? Heck, yeah. I remember watching that one on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> but I watched it. Uh, yeah, it was a big deal. I mean, because he had been so close for so many majors. And he won in, what was it, 07 or 08? It was eight, so Carnoustie had already happened, and it's something that, you know, I think obviously he needed because this is pretty much a major win, right? Quality-wise, feel-wise, it's like winning a major. And with the final round he had, where his putter was on fire and winning on that playoff was was very remarkable. So yeah, I remember watching that, and the whole country was happy for him because you know it's uh, it was a big one. I won't quote you the stats, but. Are you doing anything special to try to work on short game, some of the putting struggles that you've had? No, I know the stats, don't worry. But I don't need to know to know that it's not going well. Uh, yeah, I'm working on some stuff. I mean, I've been working on changing some things, and sometimes things get worse, apparently. <laughs> stats are not everything, right? Um, there's some things that have gotten a lot better, but you know, it's a combination of things. My ball striking has been so good as well that you know, if I miss two greens around and don't get up and down one of them because I left myself in a bad spot, the stats are not going to show that it's really that's good. So, uh, yeah, I'm working on things. We have time for just a few more. We're going to go back over to Daniel Rapport. I was just interested in something you just said, that stats aren't everything. What is your process for looking at stats after a tournament, whether it's a good tournament or a bad tournament? Are there certain ones you pay attention to, you don't pay attention to? Is it case by case? 
Well, a lot of what we have is related to the rest of the field, right? So personally, it could be getting better, but if the field has a good week and whatever it is in putting, it might not show as, as such, right? So if you're working on technique, um, like I said, you might be having working on certain fields and certain things that it might be getting better, uh, but doesn't necessarily show in the numbers, but it feels better to you, if you know what I mean. So it's hard to, it's hard to explain. You need to see the. You don't need to see the stats to feel like you're improving. If you, if it feels like it's no, getting better, no, 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 you don't need to. And that's all the questions we have, John. Thank you for taking the time to speak with us, and we wish you the best of luck this week. Thank you.